I'm gonna slow it down a little bit because you can't go like higher energy now, it's just too good. So we're gonna take it to the other side of the spectrum. And we're gonna do another thing that never has been done before at this moment. Um, a collaboration between myself and another one of my favorite artists. You've seen him a little bit before. Please welcome back to the stage, Oak. This is new shit. Everybody doing well, right? Are we all good? Yeah. Right. So, um, so, so real quick, man. Uh, you know, it's wild what's happening in the world right now. Shit's going down, and and uh, everybody. It feels as if most people can't see the way you see the world, but if you realize we all breathe the same air, and like the man said earlier, when everybody bleeds, it's red. Um, things become a lot simpler. So uh, I had a moment when I was downtown doing a, a little stupid ass show called Hamilton at the public theater. And, um, What's Hamilton? Huh? Google, son. Use Google. <laughs> and that was she enjoyed that so much. Um, and uh, when, when, when I was doing a show, you know, we were doing it downtown, the homies in the back, we were creating this beautiful show. And, uh, and, uh, I remember I was leaving the subway, got off of West 4th, and I heard a voice, this, this homeless man singing. And uh, I recognized that voice, and it was this guy named Michael Booth that I used to live with years ago. He was my roommate. And I never really liked the guy, and, and we fought a lot. And um, I kind of turned my back on him, and, and, and years later, seeing that's where he, he ended up, uh, it's, it's e I always say it's easy to give a man a dollar if you have 10, but can you give a man a dollar if you have two? Can you find a man a dollar if you have 50 cents? Um, it's great to be in a good mood if you're having a good day, but can you find a good mood if you're having a bad day? And if you're having a bad day, can you help somebody else find a good place to be? Um, so this is a poem I wrote about that experience about Michael Booth. I left a man once and he found me later. Some time ago from the future, I exit the subway and gaze at a ghost. The shadow of a person whose light burned so bright it boiled his blood and muddled his mind. Mumbling about the cold, his nose was dusted that's dry and crusted. Eyes out of tears for years, he's been hiding in my narrative as a story to be told. A punchline of that time in my life before things took flight, but our shared moment was the height of his life. His eyes, Michael. <coughs> Going on about a historical figure who shares your surname, a damn shame, but you have become Michael. How long have you been running before you lost your shoes, Michael? <coughs> Was it drugs or an imbalance of electrical current in the mind? I find myself helping you up off the ground. The palms of your hands are harder than the heartache and high stakes of your breaking. And each article of clothing is covered in text, words, lyrics to songs you were used to sing, I think. Whatever you want it. Eat. It's, it's, it's my treat, I speak. You speak of Mac, a heart attack I can't condone. So grab and go, we go. You stumble through the door of the store and we make eye contact, but each word you shoot past me to an ear we will never hear, eyes we will never see, a face that has been with you when all others have turned your way, including today. You grab only an apple, a store ripe with more than you can chew, but only an apple you choose. You mutter some more and hold my eyes for only seconds at a time. Maybe an orange, you say to a sandwich. Okay, I reply. Then you look me deep in the eye and respond, of course, an orange, oh, you are indeed Nigerian. And then you're gone again. You mention my name, and in this brief pause in time, my heart has balled up as I look up to find you are far ahead the mental moment that I am currently drowning in. I am 
I'm sorry, Michael. Take this protein bar. I'm sorry, Michael. I'm adding a cookie as well. I'm sorry, Michael. A sandwich, some more fruit. I am sorry, Michael. I pay, we leave. Michael sees me, I, I hug him. His crested breath is a scented banner of his bastard blood. He squeezes tight. He holds my eyes as his hands try to find his heart. And once his palms press against his chest, thank you stream down his cheeks. He leaves me. I left him. Years ago, I turned my back and offered not a hand, a hug, not even an ear. I will find you again, Michael. I will continue to be better. I won't lose my faith. I failed to help him. 
Let this tale not elicit sympathy for me, but empathy for he. Do not take these words and obscure the pure fact that I acted not in the best interest of mankind. Intertwine in the twilight of time is a rhyme of sorts I can't seem to sort out in sorts, but regardless of the previous phrase, I put forth none of this. I am the wolf of this tale. Michael's writing hood is red. He is indeed a dead man walking, and for every lost breath he draws, I dedicate a dollar. A moment of my time, a fist bump, an honest attempt at eye contact, a subway swipe, a slice of pizza, a piece of myself, in honor of the memory of what this man could have been, what he was, and what he can still be. His name is Michael Booth. I pray he never finds his Lincoln. Thank you.